uh, uh, something extraordinary that uh, we want to introduce. For this to make sense, I'm going to recap what uh, God's been teaching us this past uh, few, 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 you know, the, in the, the, the past few weeks that has gone by or months, we have been having some exciting time here. And um, one of the, 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 the amazing thing is the prophetic uh, 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 um, uh, uh, overview or the prophetic understanding as to where we are at right now and what is happening with us, what is happening in the world, the reason being that God is not on holiday. And the world may be running her task you know, about the COVID and the pandemic, and uh, a lot of things have been upset, but God is not upset. Nothing in his calendar that has been upset. Everything is in order. It is only those that have eyes to see that can see. Those that have ears to hear that can hear. Those that have got heart to perceive, to receive, that we know that we are living in an amazing time. And Ruben has been redefining, you know, bringing us awareness about the, the, the coming out of Egypt and the, to, the going into the promised land. Uh, Egypt, the Red, Red Sea, the teaching, salvation, freedom. And uh, all of a sudden, and how the promised land is a type of the kingdom life. And um, they, we looked at the possessing the land from the inside out. I, I, I believe we did hear the amazing uh, 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 truth, how this is relevant. You know, people read the Bible and uh, they see it as a story or as events that have no bearing in our current lifestyle. But the Bible is truth because it's the word of God. A lot of what the scripture says um, has bearing in our lives today. So the promised land was the destination because when they came out of Egypt, it was never meant for them to remain in the wilderness. Even though they spent 40 years there. Is anyone that is 40 years here in the group here tonight? Now, that is, if you look at your age, that is exactly how long and how much it took the children of Israel before they got to the promised land. But if God's original intention was never for them to wander around the wilderness. The goal was to get them out and to bring them in. So that is the goal, to possess the land. And of course, who will forget the bona fide believers? Pete, our beloved, uh, 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 oh, Ruben, what, what's the title now? For Papa? Pops. <laughs> Pops, hey. Pops, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> our beloved Pops, Matthew has been uh, bringing us a clarity and revelation on uh, on what bona fide believer is all about and uh, that talks about the authenticity the uh, authenticness the uh, we are real we are genuine the word believer is not just again an abstract word it's actually something that is defining who you are and to be a believer it means you're authentic you are genuine and you are real and uh, that has been just amazing experience, amazing journey. We've come out of Egypt, we moved out of bondage, and uh, we, are, we've, we are now in the promised land. And promised land representing the kingdom life that we are called to live. And uh, in the kingdom life, of course, the promised land is not without uh, its... Uh, ups and down. One of the amazing thing was this re revelation that Ruben begins to bring across to us. All of a sudden, we saw a character. We saw somebody. 
an old man, a oh, young man actually, 85 years, he was very young, a man by name Caleb. All of a sudden, we start to see something unique in his life. We begin to see a type of the bride moving from just being sons to our inheritance, as well as a place of responsibility. Because the promised land, and the Ruben did put a picture that the picture, you know, show a vast land, a, a hill area that looks so untouched, you know. And um, when you see that, what comes to mind is the promised land is going to be inherited, it's going to be inhabited, and it's going to be inherited. It is a place that calls for responsibility. It's called for inheritance, but it also calls for responsibility. And all these you know, you're saying, where is this taking us? It's taking us somewhere because the, 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 the miracle of salvation, the miracle of deliverance that took the people out of Egypt and brought them into the promised land. And we saw from Caleb that it actually is a, is a, it's like a new beginning of living your potential, living your destiny, living your purpose, where everything, all of a sudden, you, you've got to do something. And uh, Caleb was saying to Joshua, he said, you were there the day that Moses, you know, uh, both of us brought, in, uh, brought back the report from spying the land and uh, Moses, and said that, that we, you and I, will get here. It has taken me 45 years to be here. And, uh, but I'm here now, and uh, I am still ready to possess my possession. And he pointed to the mountain that was inhabited at that time by the Anakites. The Anakites are the descendants of Goliath. We are... You know, they are giants by nature, by everything. They are aggressive people. They are warriors. They are all kinds of, you know, anything that you want to uh, position yourself with. But Caleb saw the Anakites as an opportunity. He never saw them as a, a, a hindrance to possess his position, but he saw them as an opportunity for miracle. And um, after that, I've been talking on how to have a healthy mind. And uh, this is practical way where and how we actually not allowing anything in our lives to hinder us from living a life of victory because God has given us victory in every way. So I thought bringing this to this, these are things that you, if you've been following us the last one, uh, one month, uh, you know, one month or so, six weeks or so, you have had all this. It, it, these are messages that have come across and they've come across amazingly in a, such a beautiful way that we, uh, we, we are ready for anything and everything. Now, the Lord has given us all this for a reason. In the promised land, the land was not without enemy. The land had challenges. There were some people that were still there, but it was never meant for those, those things to stop them from, inher from their inheritances. One of these uh, scripture in the Old Testament I love is, um, I think it's in Isaiah also, where it says, it says, rule in the presence of your enemies. You know, that's it. Is it? Yeah, it's a rule, rule in the presence of your enemies. It's amazing scripture. And um, yeah, having here all this, this prepare, when I was talking about the mind, you know, how to have a healthy mind, I did uh, present us, if you remember, you know, our mind is like a multi-room, a multi-room mansion where, you know, in a multi-room, some areas have been, uh, occupied, some areas have been cleaned and furnished, and some areas are not yet been touched. No one has even entered there. There are things 
in that area that can frighten you. And uh, you may think that the whole house is occupied, but you have no idea that there are some certain things in those buildings, in those rooms. And uh, each time those things, the enemy use them to sabotage our identity, what we have. So we said the goal is to bring each room out of darkness, meaning that each room being entirely penetrated by the truth of the word of God. And then um, we looked at the rooms. I talked about, you know, redemption actually means divine transformation. You know, when we receive Jesus, when we receive the gospel, when we come to the Lord, something definitely happened to us. It's like coming out of Egypt. Coming out of Egypt was immediate, was, you know, spontaneous, was complete. When they crossed the Red Sea, they found themselves on the other side. They are no more in Egypt anymore. They've come out. But that is the beginning. They came out of something to get into something. And then when they get into something, that is where they begin to find that, whoops, some rooms in their mind are not being transformed. Divine transformation comes according to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may know the will and the good and the acceptable of the Lord. And we are transformed. And uh, I did say last time that conversion is both an event, but it is also a process. I think this is where what I'm sharing tonight is very important to us. And this is where we believe God wants us to be equipped each and every one of us to have a toolbox. Do you have a toolbox? And if you do, what's in your toolbox? We know the importance of having a toolbox. Fathers today know, you know, when I've already done something in the house, I have to put a hole and a pass cable today and then I Put a um, power socket, outlet, you know, something that doesn't require a professional electrician to come, just to get through to, so that we can plug the thing so we can easily charge our phones and stuff like that. I was able to do that because I have tools. What if I don't have the tools? Or maybe I have a toolbox, but what I needed to do that job was not in it. That will lead to frustration. And this is why we begin to look at life toolbox. And this life toolbox is all about building a better relationship. It is about using tools from the life toolbox. And this is the amazing thing for each and every one of us that when you said, and the Lord did not just leave you to roam through life on your own. Last week was powerful because we talk about the Holy Spirit. We have, you know, Ruben brought us a powerful message about the Holy Spirit. You know, how Jesus said it is important that I have to go because if I do not go, he will not come. And when the Holy Spirit come, we now have discovered that we are no more in the flesh, but we are in the spirit. Now, what do you know? And how you allow what you know to serve you where, when needs arises, there are two different things. A lot of people are not equipped on daily basis. And this is why we are bringing this today. So by using tools from the toolbox, you know, our primary conflict is not against evil spirit. I would like you to take note of this statement today because there is profound truth in this. Many of us, you know, we engage in, you know, in a spiritual warfare to cast out demon this, demon that, demon. That's a man in, uh, in New Zealand that wrote a book and uh, there is a demon of drunkenness. There is a 
Everything in life has a demon attached to it. And if you come for prayer, they will ask you what you're going through and they begin to cast out that demon. And the same person that is prayed for will go out of the door, nothing has changed. And he come back the same, the next time and he's even worse than when he comes for the prayer. You and I know how we've been going out for prayer for so many times and so many things, you know. And yet, nothing really has shifted from our lives, our experiences. So I say down here that our primary conflict is not against evil spirits but against wrong beliefs and subconscious mistaken conclusions which allow those destructive agents access into our lives in the first place, okay? Wherever we are loyal to a lie, we give the father of lies his right to rob, to kill, and to destroy. Think about it. If there is any lies that is in one of those rooms that has not been cleansed, that has not been transformed, that the light of a redemption, are, you know, redemption has happened, but it, 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 the renewal hasn't taken place in that areas of our lives, that actually gave the father of lies the right. A few years back, we actually described this as a, you know, you are in your house and an arm robber knock at the door and you open the door. You are the one holding your gun, guarding your house. And as you open the door, this uh, thief said, hand me your gun, give me your gun. And out of fear and shock, you took your gun and you gave to the arm robber. And he took it and he said to you, hands up, you surrender your hand. He said, turn around, it's okay, take me to your room. He put the gun behind you and you start to go room by room and you start to take your precious things. Now, who's the gun in the first place? Yours. Why did you surrender the gun? Because you don't know. Because you've been intimidated. Because you've been bullied. And having been bullied, you gave the enemy the power. A lot of what happened in our lives will not happen if we understand the life tools. This life toolbox we are talking about, okay? Listen to this, I love this, Ruben. The anointing does break the yoke, but only a specific relevant truth will set you free in the long term. Who believe that? You can put a one in the box, in the chat, if you believe that. You know, we've been through church all our life. We've been through warfare all our life. We've been prayed over and over and over. Yes, the anointing is there. It works. But if you're in Africa, you begin to see all kinds of anointing. I have seen flogging anointing. We are pastor lay all the members of the church on the floor and he start to flog them. And he'll be flogging them one by one. And this video, this is on the YouTube, it's, it's out there on, on the internet. I also have seen another uh, pastor that carry member on the, on the shoulder and run, 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 and then through the member flying about two, three meters away, crash on chairs. Now, that's an anointing breaking the yoke. If you understand that, that to be the anointing, I tell you that will take a long time before it can break through you. It might break your bone. It might break your ribs. You might leave a church with bruises because the pastor has flogged you and flogged you and flogged you. But we are saying here specific, specific, Relevant truth is what will set free long term. John 8, 82 say, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And this is why we are talking about the life toolbox. See, 
These lies that the enemy, the father of lies, these mistaken conclusions or wrong beliefs somehow has been working against us. No matter how much you pray, no matter how much you laid hand upon, but there is something that is undermining what God is doing in our lives. And here we are saying these lives must be traced and they must be faced and they must be replaced in order to have, to live, to function, to be authentic, to be genuine, to be real. Because those words are not just descriptive words. Those words actually represent who we are in truth from God, okay? Now, are you in here? Are you in this place? And if you do, I'm saying you don't have to be. Are you in here? Are you still hurting with past regrets, life dominating disappointments? Even though you can sing, even though you can speak in tongue, but every time, you remember something, it, your mood changes. Something that happened years ago, for some reason, it's like a life dominating something. You still have not. You know, you're not talking about it. Probably you've talked to the Lord privately. Maybe you've even gone confession and speak to a priest about it but there's still no victory. How about trapped in a marriage? You can't stay and you can't leave. Are you still there? Are you there? Are you in a destructive behavior? Example, life dominating anger. People have no idea that anger is disastrous. We've, I mean, we've seen uh, uh, in the media over in this country some things. All you have to flip like that, and whether it's a machete or a knife or whatever, and before you know it, someone's life is taken. Life dominating anger, frustrations, loss of control. Are you here? How about trying to forgive and still angry? You know, you've read it, forgive, forgive. If you do not forgive, you know, neither will your heavenly father forgive you. And you say, but I've tried. I've tried to forgive, but I can't. And you've done it, you know, so please say, God, you said, should, yeah, forgive. But each time you see the person or each time something, you know, an echo from the past hit you about that, I'm angry. Well, that's a sign that is not being properly, is not totally being renewed. When God called us and put us together, the scripture that guide what we are doing is atmosphere 12.2. And you know that atmosphere 12.2 is Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Don't be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This has been a strength and a whole lot of what we teach, a lot of what we say, emanate from that. Discovering our identity, knowing who we are. You know, many times we have discovered, I, I, one of the, the, the groups, that uh, we had in the past, there's someone saying, you know, say, I struggle to see myself as a son of God. Say that it's, 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 it's a, it is a struggle. You know why? Because there is underlying lies, something, the enemy, there is an agreement with the, with the father of lies somehow that is making it impossible for him to accept the truth from God. Okay, so how about self-hatred and self-rejection, feeling of inadequate, 
all the time. Are you in here? Is, you know, this is where Life Toolbox brings truth, truth insights that will transform. And this is what we are going to do. You know, if you notice our approach, how we've been relating to everyone here, we don't just want to talk to you. We don't just want to preach at you. We don't just want to give you sermons because that's what we've got all our lives in church setting. We go every week to be preached at. Sometimes we are even told of. Sometimes we are told how bad we have been because uh, we miss service one or two. Or you've missed giving your one tenth for once and then you become, you know, the anger of God is over you. All this kind of a thing. Our desire is to help you walk through. So the purpose for this life toolbox is to bring truth insight that will transform our lives. Hey, I like this, Ruben. Pastoral therapist. Ruben. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I know you are. Listen to this. It says here, say, Pastor Luke is an amazing mind shifter. He has the ability to make the most complex situation simple. No matter how tough a situation you think you are in, in financially or health-wise or relationship-wise, Pastor Luke will shift gears in your mind to enable you to see the bigger picture and find simple, effective steps to change your situation within a short period of time. And his information will take you from where you are, successful or not, to something beyond your widest dream. Wow. How long ago did I write that? Ruben, I... this will be 2010. Wow. 10 years ago. The Holy Spirit reminded me this, and uh, within uh, not quite five minutes, I found uh, where uh, in, uh, you know where this is in the in uh, in my old uh, documents files and stuff. And I'm looking at this. I say, God, church brothers and sisters, what you are looking at, this man Reuben, this was what he said about me in 2010. And I want to ask you here, Ruben, how did you see this? How did you know this? Because the Holy Spirit said to me, as I was preparing this, he said, do you remember this is who you are? And this is what I have called you to do, to reposition my people through life toolbox to, so that their lives will be everything. There is no way we will give the father of lies any room to rob us what belongs to us. Do you know that it took Caleb of all the people that came out of Egypt, all of them died in the wilderness, within the 40 years of wandering. Only Caleb and Joshua got into the promised land. And Caleb was able to get to the promised land because he had a different spirit. Ruben told us last time. He had a different spirit, and the spirit he had is the spirit of God. Now, for him, he was ready from day one to possess his possession. But others hindered him. The unbelief of others kept him from. But thank God eventually got there. And the Lord is saying that, you know, we may all have been hindered through wrong belief or wrong teachings and wrong understanding of who our Heavenly Father is. But now things are changing. The Holy Spirit is shifting things in our minds. Those rooms are going to, light of grace is going to shine in every room of our mind so that our lives will be everything we are created to be. Isn't that amazing? And um, 
That is what we are working on, and that is what I am offering every one of us that is here today. There's going to be a live, a live toolbox a free webinar, understanding, restoring, and rebuilding better relationships. It's going to be a free event. This is happening on September the 18th. It's going to be a Friday, 7 p.m. And um, I invite you to be part of Truth Insight, you know, of uh, this uh, Truth Insight for two hours. Uh, if you know someone who probably will benefit, if you also can uh, uh, let them know about it, because we're not going to sit on the fence anymore. We're not going to watch your life being run, ruined by the enemy. One of the prayer requests that has come up tonight is about stress you know, and depression. There's no way you're going to live with that because there is a better life for you. There is awesome, awesome. No matter what is causing that, we're going to trace it, we're going to face it, and we're going to replace it. So I'm saying that this is happening, and uh, if you are interested and you would like to be part of it, the process is, you know, what I put out here. You know, with Tracy, that means, what am I telling myself? Am I telling myself the truth? And what is the source of what I'm hearing? Who is talking to me? Whose voice am I hearing subconsciously? And we facing it is to look at it truthfully, objectively, from light point of view, what heaven says, what God says. The next step is we replace it. In other words, if what you are telling yourself is not the truth, what is then? What is the truth? You'll be amazed. A lot of people think that truth is relative. Truth is not relative. <laughs> truth is a person. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So he is the truth. Okay? So trace it, face it, replace it, and then do it. Because action always reinforces attitude. Last time I spoke, I did ask us to go through this, you know, like, you know, as, as a exercise. And uh, if, if we can do this on daily basis, so they have most been, you know, I've, I've mostly been feeling, monitor what you are feeling. I've mostly been feeling, even now, think about what you've been feeling all day. And this feeling is because I've been telling myself, write out, write down, see with your eyes what you've been telling yourself. When you write down what you've been feeling, then you say, the, uh, this is because, the reason I'm feeling this way is because, you write it down. And so my basic belief, my basic belief must be, the reason why, because it has to be. And then we come to the fourth point, which says, what is God's opinion? Because if you are a child of God, if you are a son of God, God has not left you. Caleb said, God promised me. God gave me this mountain 40 years ago. He said, I'm ready to take it now. He did not let what God said go. If Caleb had left what God said, he would have died and perished like the other. I, I, I mean, it was said you know, about 3 million people that came out of Egypt. All of them perished in the wilderness. When we begin and align ourselves with the father of lies. So the challenge for us is the question or the problem I'm now left is, you know, write it out. If you need to talk to any of us, we are available. We are ready. But we are putting up this uh, webinar information time, and that is I'm going to talk on relationship. 
better uh, building a better relationship. And I know that a lot of people are struggling in many areas. And um, that's going to be a key for us. I know what it means to go through life without a father. I mean, we are celebrating Father's Day today. But I tell you, I did not know my father from the age of five, six, 